Hey what's up guys in this video I'm going to show you all the steps I took to make this sliding barn door for my master bedroom. To get started I'm going to make all my lumber cuts a bit longer than the actual framing of the door so in this case it's 4 to 7 inch long. Now once everything is all glued together later on I will go back and square up the door. Normally when you purchase these board they have moisture in them so they're known for shrinking so what I did was I left them outside for a few days, let them dry up, bring them inside and let them get accustomed to the humidity in the house. Now to make these cuts a circular saw or in this case a miter saw works well for cutting these lumber. Now here's all the pieces after I'm done cutting, I had a total of 10 of them. Now a few of these lumbers were not as straight as I like but what I did was I ran them through the planer take a layer off and get them smooth they're not perfect but I didn't want to overdo it because at this point it would have just kept thinning out the board now you can totally use whatever lumber you choose for this project if you like the concept and you want to build something similar I'd probably say use a different kind of lumber select pine poplar whatever you can find that's you know not as heavy as this and as bulky that you require a machine like this one to mill them down now I'm using these lumber because it matches the bed that I made recently and also they're inexpensive. So on my sawhorse I set up a couple 2x4s and I also add tape on top of them because I'll be gluing on this platform later on in the video and I just didn't want the boards to get stuck. Now as you can see here I'm sticking a piece of paper through two of these sandwiched together but what's happening is they're not straight so I'm going to rip them down on the table saw and try to create as straight of an edge as possible. And if you have a joiner this is probably the perfect time to pull it out and create a straight edge. Now being that I've milled these boards down and also ripped off the ends, I now have squared edge and I want to round over the edge because I like the round over look when they actually meet. So I'm going to create that using the router and the round over bit. Now when I first sketched this project up, I thought it'd probably take me a day, day and a half, but it actually turned into a few days on and off. It just was a lot of work and a whole lot of meticulous things that I had to address during the process. Now because I've never built anything like this before, I had a lot of uncertainty going into this project as far as how I was going to attach the pieces and join them together. In this case, I'm going to use some dowels just to hold these together and then I'll add other joineries to it later on in the process. And I'm using the dowels because I felt like that was the best way to get the surface of them to line up. Based on my past experience, I find it best to just mark on both pieces at the same time and that way when you use the jig, everything lines up. Now just duplicate the same step over and over again until you drill everything. Then you can move on to the gluing process. Now since I have a lot of gluing to get to, this glue applicator from Rockler is just perfect for the job. Squeezing the bottle, the glue coming out, and I'm spreading it at the same time. Now I do know that the top part of the door is going to be holding a lot of weight. It's going to be holding everything below it so that could get a bit heavy for it. So in this case I want to make sure that I do apply enough glue on the dowel, in the hole, and also on both pieces as I clamp it together. Now I have used different type of wood glue before but this one in particular just seemed like it dries up really fast so I have to get the ball rolling. I'm only going to use three panels at a time because that just seems manageable and then later on I glue those panels together. Now after you apply clamps just take a wet rag to remove all the glue squeeze out. And as you can see here, I'm clamping down the final panel just to make sure everything is as straight as possible. And after allowing the glue to dry, I can now come back and put the panels together. Now I have the best side facing down, which is the front part of the door. And then I'm going to take a couple one by twos and trace those onto the door. In this case, I'm going to route those out creating a dado slot so I can sit those inside. Now being that I don't have clamps large enough to clamp this door what I'm going to do is take a piece of 2x2 two two, screw that into place push the lumber into it and that would act as a stop. Now I can route out the slot that was previously marked. I keep this aluminum tubing in the shop to use as a straight edge and in this case I'm using it as a fence and I also brace the middle of it so it don't bow when I get to that section. And with the routing being done it's time to pull out the wood glue and let's get the gluing again. And to glue these panels together I'm just going to follow the same process I did previously. Gluing the dowels and also gluing in between the joints.
And now that all the joints are fully glued, I'm gonna attach a piece of wood on the back end. Then I'll take some other pieces of scrap wood and wedge that in between. And what this does, it compresses the joints. Now I do wanna make sure this is as tight as possible. And I just happen to have some straps on hand. I put those on on the outer end and now I can tighten it down. And to make sure this doesn't buckle at the joint, I'm gonna take a piece of angle iron and clamp it into place. Now if I was to do this over again, I'd probably use metal tubing instead of using the one by two because wood usually flex. You can check the video description for a link to these hardware pieces from Industrial by Design. Now I just got this self-leveling line laser which I'm going to be using to create a straight line across the wall so hoping to give this one a shot and see how well it works out. Now based on the specs, the laser line should project out to about 98 feet going horizontal and vertical now the reason why I'm using a level is because I want to create a straight edge but I also want to double check this line just to make sure that it's on point for future projects now using a stud finder I'm gonna find the studs in the wall and these are 16 inches apart which actually matches the same holes that would be in the sliding barn door hardware now this is not a typical installation and what I mean by that I'm gonna be using a hammer drill because I'm drilling into a concrete block the screws that come with the barn door hardware are only for wood. I'm still planning to use the screws but I also use some large wall anchors. Now I have used these particular anchors in the past. They were used for the large plasma TVs back in the days. They used to come with the brackets. So I have a lot of confidence in them. Once you run a screw inside of them they open up and there's no pulling them out of the wall. And now that I'm doing work on this wall, it's the perfect time to paint it. As you see I've already got started in the room, painted the other wall over there probably a few months ago. It's probably been more like a year don't judge me so since this installation is a bit unique I'm gonna cut the bar and then I'm gonna drill a new hole so that it fit the stud of where I plan to put it in now the doorstop on one side will be in a fixed position I'm gonna drill a hole right through the doorstop and also the bar itself and then I run the bolt right through it into the wall so at this point you're probably wondering why am I covering the door with another door one, I've always wanted a sliding barn door. Two, I have no privacy through this door. And three, I don't want to put up curtains. Now, as I was installing the hardware into the wall, I thought I was onto something. I didn't want to remove the trim of the door. So I decided to use these washer spray paint them black and I thought that would kick the door off enough. However, that actually didn't work out in my favor. And you'll see towards the end. Now I use an impact driver to drive the bolts into the wall, then I use a ratchet and tighten them by hand because I didn't want to over tighten them. So I did tell you that this thing was strong, right? So I'm 190 pounds, so I'm just going to hang on this thing for a little bit and it's, it's pretty solid. The door is only 116 pounds minus any hardware, so this, it should be fine. The next thing I want to do is to square up the door and you'll need anything with a straight edge of any sort that you can use as a guide so that you can make a straight cut. Now you'll want to do the same thing for both sides or even the top and bottom depending on how straight your door is. Now take your router or your sander to round over the edge so that it's not so rough on the hands while handling. And while I have the router in my hand, I'm gonna route out a channel at the bottom of the door. Now you'll need to route this in because this plastic piece is a guide that keeps the door from swinging out. And now for the moment of truth, the most exciting part of woodworking. I'm gonna sand this thing down top, bottom, side, just like that. And then we can move on to installing the hardware. Now this is all coordinated to the way I mounted the bar, also with the stop piece on the bar. I went three inches from each edge to the bolts. I'm gonna apply the same finish that was applied to the platform bed that was made a couple months ago. Here's one thing I can't wrap my head around. When the door is laying down right next to the bed, the colors look identical. When the door is in an upright position, for some reason it looks darker. Maybe it's the way the light is hitting it, just not sure. I was looking for handles on the internet and all the handles I like cost way too much and I couldn't justify spending a few hundred dollars on a handle. So I decided to make my own and I'd just be satisfied with the end results. Now if you were to go purchase this piece of wood from the store, it would cost you around six to eight dollars. The construction of this was very simple. I cut one piece of wood that was 40 inch in length and then the other piece that was one inch in length. Then I rounded over the edge on the router. I tried to make this as simple and accurate as possible so what I did was I took two pieces of small wood, cut those to the same length and put those on the outer edge of the bar. Then I placed a piece of quarter inch ply within the spacing. Then I set the two spacers next to the outer wood and then put some scrap wood on the inside to pin those in place. 
once the middle of the spacer have been fine i can then drill a hole all the way through the spacer the plywood and also into the bar then i remove the plywood which will be used as a template for mounting the bar later next install a threaded nut into the wooden bar apply wood glue and attach a small piece of wood you can clamp it down but this may shift so i think the best thing to do is to use the screw and screw it into place you can also use a piece of wood, drill a hole through it, and use that as a large spacer as well so you can mimic what I'm doing here. I sand it down and applied four coats of high gloss black paint. And with majority of the work behind us, it's time to install the hardware, tighten it up, and then we can move on to installing the handle. Making a template just went a long ways because it definitely helped me speed up the process. All I have to do is just align that, drill the holes, and then I can install the handle. I'm going to install this 8th inch thick aluminum angle iron and it serves two purposes. One, I wanted to have a rustic modern look to it. I also wanted this to give off a luxury feel as well. Being that I couldn't get the handles that I wanted, I think this kind of made up for it. And the number two reason is to add resistance to the door wanting to warp due to temperature change. Now it took about two hours to pre-drill and countersink the aluminum angle for both sides. I did ones do the top and bottom, but once I looked at it, I didn't like it. I really just like the ones going on the side of the door. I did mention this plastic guide early on in the video, but I'm unable to use it because I have carpet right now and with the cushion it just make it tough to install. So I decided to use a spacer and a baron. These two plastic locks get installed on top of the door which prevent the door from coming off the track. However, I have to install them later because I currently have to remove the trim which I did not want to get into, but it's all good. We'll just put it on the to-do list and get back at it another time. After you install the door on a track, you can then tighten up the stop and this will prevent the door from going any further. So here's the cost breakdown on this project. You have $79 in lumber, another $99 in hardware kit from Industrial by Design, and with two pieces of aluminum angle, which is $76, and that brings you total to $254 on this project. If you want to see more projects like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see what I'm up to next, be sure to check me out on Instagram, DIYCreators2015. If you enjoy what I do and you like to support the channel, a great way to do that is over on Patreon.com forward slash DIYCreators. This is a way to support the channel and help me produce future content. I'm Glenn with DIYCreators, and I'll see you next time.